welcome to another episode of Jim's Lockman Garden. In the next few episodes I'm going to be explaining to you how to build a, um, a tunnel um, to put mesh over. You can use exactly the same theory to make a polytunnel as well. But uh, what I'm going to um, basically explain to you is how to make a uh, like a fruit cage so you can put that over your, you know, your fruit and your other crops, brassicas and things like that to prevent things like butterflies um, getting in there and laying eggs on there, um, birds, pigeons and things like that getting in there to eat the um, uh, you know the young growth on the plants, or to prevent rabbits getting in there, or, or anything else. So these are this is a really effective way of protecting your crops in the allotments, and of course it's something that you can use year on year out. So apart from the initial cost or effort to build w one of these things, you know as soon as you've got it in place, you know it'll 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 serve you for a good 10, 15 years in the you know into the future. Now I'm going to construct one by hand, um, and I'm going to fabricate it out of. Um, Harrison fence panels. Now these I've managed to get um, free of charge from a, a, a you know from a local uh, building site, uh, but you can buy these quite readily on the internet, um, and you can you can buy either either new or used ones. And there's there's various means and ways of putting them together to construct the tunnel. But I'm actually going to be taking them apart all together and making an arch tunnel because I believe that that looks quite nice on the allotment. So that's the way I'm going to do it. I've already got to. I don't know if you've seen any of my previous episodes but you know that I've got two tunnels I'm going to be basically making another one like that but it's going to be slightly larger it's going to be slightly wider so over the next few episodes what I'm going to be doing is explaining to you in step-by-step -step, um, methods of, of how to um, take apart the Harrison fence panels how to put them back together in in, a, in an arched form and then sort of moving forward how to basically construct the entire um, cage all being well free of charge. I'm, I've so far I'm sort of halfway through and I've not spent a penny yet. So um, hopefully you can do something similar, or at least it's going to be a lot cheaper than it would be if you um, buy it in the shops, and you have the enjoyment of building it um, along the way. So welcome to another episode of Jim's Lamb Garden. <laughs> Okay, so step one to making a tunnel from Harrison fence panels. The first thing you need to do is take off the um, the mesh from the the actual framework. And basically, the way that you do that is you strike the um, each of the uh, the spot welds that's holding the mesh on with a hammer and chisel. So I'll just show you how to do that now. Okay, so to break the the welds on the um, on the uh, the framework, basically all you need is a reasonable sized hammer and a, um, a cold chisel. Now you want the sharp, sharp as you possibly can cold chisel. So as you can see what I've done is I've actually sharpened this one. This is actually a brick uh, to get between bricks. Um, um, it's, it's actual use. But you can actually break the weld in one of two ways. These aren't particularly strong welds. But basically what you want to do is come in from the inside of the, uh, the weld like that. And this is where, this is where the sharp chisel helps. Now put your foot on the um, on the frame as best you can just to support it. And that's the well broken like that. The other way you can do it is just by um, basically squeezing it if you like. So what you need to do is get the chisel in there and just twist the metal up like that and then you can you can just lever between the framework like that and you can break it like that. The only downside of that is it bends the uh, the grill? So if you want to keep the grill for another job, um, you know it will bend it slightly. It'll bend it here and here. But these end, these little end pieces, you're going to probably cut off anyway. You know because you don't want pieces sticking out. But uh, the easiest way I've found to do it, or the fastest way to do it, is the first way, just by putting the chisel underneath the weld like that, and then just striking it a few times. You're much better off hitting it hard a few times rather than many times. Um, Basically, like that, and that's gone straight through the weld and broken it off. So all you need to do is go all the way around, breaking the welds off in that manner. 
Okay, so as soon as you've got the net off, you're basically left with the frame. So the next step is, uh, obviously, if you go around and just check where you've chiselled them off. If you've chiselled them off nice and clean, and you've not dented the pipe too much, um, you know, you can leave them as is, because obviously this is galvanised, and that's uh, you don't really want to be taking any of that surface off, because um, that's going to protect the metal. But if you have got any rough edges like that, that you're likely to catch your fingers or anything on like that, just, just go over it with either a file or an angle grinder, just to get rid of any um, any bits that could potentially hurt, um, you know, in a later time. So the next step is to take off these uh, these right angle brackets. Now, obviously, what I'm trying to do is separate all the pipes as much as possible and salvage as much as I possibly can do. But um, you know, you do need to kind of resign yourself to the fact that you may well lose some of the end bits because of the the way that they're constructed. Now, different um, house and fence panels are constructed. Um, you, you know, in different fashions, but these ones that I've got, I've got this right angle bracket on, and basically this is a just a pressed piece of um, steel or piece of tin, uh, which is um, spot welded in four places. So all I've basically got to do is cut through the uh, the spot welds. You can do this in one of two ways. Uh, you can either drill down into it down into the spot weld and take that off in one go so just get a drill and basically drill on top of where the spot welds are which will basically take out the spot weld I would probably use an 8 mil drill just to cut off um, and then you can basically take that off obviously don't drill all the way through you only need to drill off the uh, the weld at the top um, that's that's one way of doing it or you could potentially um, cut down here and leave these on but what I'm going to do is basically just chisel them off because it's the easiest and cheapest way of doing it so I'll just show you me doing that now Okay, so just to show you, basically I've already done the first one. What you do is basically lift up the metal, I'll just show you on this side here. So basically what you want to do is, with a reasonable sized hammer, this is a two pound bullpen hammer, you just want to go between the metal bracket and the pipe. And basically just lift the, lift the bracket away from the pipe. And then with the with the, with the chisel facing towards the spot well, basically chisel it in. And what it's going to do, the spot weld won't break. What will happen is the chisel will actually chisel through this top plate and um, around the weld. And I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. Okay, so as you can see, all I did is lifted up the lifted up the plate, and then with the chisel drove it in like that. And as you can see, what it's done is it's cut through this top plate. So all I need to do now is exactly the same thing. And put the chisel all the way through to this far weld here and just drive it with the hammer through this here and then again on there and I'll show you what that looks like afterward. Okay, so there's the joint with the plate taken off. Obviously the plate went, plate went on like that, so I've chiseled all the, the welds out. Now, separating this joint here is going to be almost impossible. Um, I'll show you the one that I uh, did a few moments ago in a second. But basically, if you chisel around there, it basically distorts uh, the pipe a little bit. So what I'm going to do with an angle grinder now is cut through there so I don't distort the... Uh, don't distort the pipe, but I'll show you one that I tried to chisel earlier, um, which is the further corner. So there's one that I chiselled, um, and all I did is basically got the chisel and chisel round there, chiselled it off. Now this this steel's quite soft, and you'll find on Harrison fencing, it's not the best steel. It's quite mild, um, so it'll it'll chisel quite easily. But I think at this point you're much better off with an angle grinder just cutting through there. Um, to um, basically make a cleaner joint and not to distort this piece of pipe because I want that piece of pipe all the way to the end if I can. Um, this one I'm going to cut off here anyway because this bit is kind of swayed a little bit so basically I'll discard that anyway so I'll show you me doing that now. Okay so I'm just using a bog standard on grinder obviously safety first make sure you've got goggles on gloves etc if that's the way you prefer to do things um, and I've got on here a very narrow uh, cutting disc not a grinding disc and what I'm going to do is basically cut through the side there, um, straight the way through, 
and then what I'll do is I can tidy that up later. The reason I'm doing it with the angle grinds, I don't want to distort this um, this piece here, but uh, I'll, I'll now show you me cutting through here. Okay, so what I'll need to do now is turn that over and cut it on the other side. But just so, just so you know, obviously this is where the uh, the spot welds were here. Just to tidy them up, all you basically need to do with a grinding disc. This isn't the right disc really, but just go over it like this. And that will leave a nice smooth surface so there's no sort of sharp edges or anything like that. So when you're making your, your tunnel you've got no edges or anything like that. So I'll just turn this over and I'll just cut through the other side and then I'll show you another trick of how to cut a straight line. Okay so I want to cut across here because basically I don't want this bend in it, I just want to have straight pieces of pipe. So what I want to do is cut a line which is obviously straight and square to the other uh, pipe. Now, if you don't have um, a bench grinder or anything like that, the easiest way to do this is just with a toilet roll in inner. And basically what you do is you put that round the pipe, like that. And what that will actually give you, I'll just show you, as you can see, that will give you an actual straight line, which is directly round the pipe. So, if you, if you put that on, basically what you're going to get is pretty much a straight, straight edge. So if I cut up against that now, like that and go all the way around that will give me an absolutely square line running around so I want to save as much of the pipe as possible so I'm just going to hold that down if the pipe's slightly bigger than a toilet roll just a piece of straight square card will do it just wrap that round I've obviously got it on a brick here to support the uh, obviously I don't want this on the floor and I'm cutting it I'm just going to put my foot on the pipe as well to make sure and what I'm doing is obviously always make sure you're out of line with the cut and I'm just going to cut slightly um, to the side of the cardboard. Obviously you don't want to cut onto the cardboard so you don't want to cut the actual cardboard itself. So now I've done that with the cardboard, as you can see, I've got an absolutely flat, um, straight cut through there. So if I try to marry up another piece of pipe onto that, it's going to be a, um, a perfect edge to, to weld round to. So all I'll do now is continue that round the rest of the um, round the rest of the pipes. So obviously, I'll cut another one here, and then what I'll end up with is obviously nice straight, straight lengths of pipe like that with a nice square edge on the top of each one. Okay, so what you should end up with is four pieces of pipe, obviously the shortest two of the sides, they're kind of about five, five and a half foot long. And then you should have two long pieces, which is basically the top and the bottom of the um, Harrison fencing. Now they're somewhere in the region of 11 foot long. And then obviously what you'll end up also with is the two, um, the two right angle pieces, which were at the top two corners, and the two brackets. Now, I'm not going to use these these um, corner pieces but they may well come in useful for something um, at the top of another frame or something like that so I'm going to put them on one side maybe for later on. Um, these brackets here um, even though they're a little bit bent uh, what you can do is basically just straighten these up and then if you weld into these holes you can then basically reform a, um, a joint with those. So what I'm going to do is just put them on one side for now because uh, they may well come in to strengthen the, uh, the whole structure um, later on. Okay, so now we've taken um, a couple of them apart, basically what I want to do is uh, start to uh, make the sides. Now the, the actual tunnel needs to be uh, 22 foot long and these panels just so happen to be 11, 
11 foot 4 inches long. So basically what I want to do is make the sides out of, out of basically um, a full length with these uprights being in place. So what I want to do is basically connect two of these together if you imagine. So you've got one like that, this will make the side up to about here. And then this will be the run along the bottom of the side. And then this will be the middle post if you like. And then I'll have another one connected here which will then do the, which will then do the other half of the side. So what I want to do basically is take apart um, this here, take out this post here, but, but retain this bracket here. Now the way to do this is basically, as I explained before, the last one I showed you, I chiselled these out. What I want to do is with these is actually drill them out. Now the best way to do this is a conventional drill, looks like that. So you've got basically like a, um, an angled drill at the top there. But what I've got here is a, um, a drill which has been sharpened in a particular way. Um, so it'll, um, it'll actually take out, so that, that middle point in the middle will basically locate there and then the, the, outer, the outer cutting bits as you can see there sort of stick down slightly and what that'll do is actually cut a ring out of the, of the thing. Now this, this drill bit here started off life exactly like this one and all I've done is I've sharpened it um, to, to that point like that so I can get the uh, get these um, spot welds out without deforming this this bracket here so I'll show you me doing that now So as you can see there now that bracket has come away. So what it's actually done is cut out, as you can see the middle part of the weld is still there, but that's now separated and I've not deformed the bracket, so that's the other way of getting these off. Now all I need to do is basically cut through this here so I can then align this up with the next um, fence panel. So by drilling out the, uh, the two um, spot welds there and cutting with the angle grinder through there, I had to finish it off with a chisel. Obviously I, I cut through this side, turned it over, cut the other side and then I just chiselled the remaining little bits because I don't want to damage this bracket here. As you can see you can separate um, this joint quite easily and that's perfectly good to align with the next piece and be welded on and um, be nice and sound. So all I need to do now is in exactly the same way as I showed you in the previous clip, I'm just going to cut this piece um, at the top there um, to the uh, so I get a, as, as long a piece as possible and take off the other sides and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay so now you can see I've got this bottom corner so that's going to be one of the corners of the uh, of the tunnel and I've basically cut off the, uh, the angle at the top. Obviously that bit's now free there. And this is going to be the bottom bottom strut to the and that's going to basically be the middle where you can see the end there. So basically what I need to do now is to cut um, cut this to length. Now what I've decided to do is to make this piece from, from ground level, which is going to be there, I'm, I'm going to count 30 inches. So basically what I'm going to do is measure up from, from here to here 30 inches, and then I'm going to uh, basically cut that off um, there, which will basically make the uh, the first side post of the of the tunnel. So I'll show you me doing that now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I've cut that that end corner um, using the uh, the toilet roll trick, and just just so you can see what it's going to look like, I've just placed that pipe in there, which is going to attach here with one of these corner brackets, and then basically you're looking at the side, the first half of the side. I've just put a piece of pipe in the end there. Um, that's going to be basically the middle of it. So if you imagine this same thing again um, on the end going kind of that way, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so this is the next one which is going to make the second half of the, uh, the first side. So all I need to do basically, I'm going to leave both both uprights on this one, so I don't need to touch the brackets at all. And all I need to do is measure up from this this bar here up 30 inches, and cut it off there, and up 30 inches and cut it off there, and then basically that will make the um, the side. But what I want to do in the middle, because I'm going to have two of these brackets on the side, what I want to do is put a constant piece of pipe running through the middle, so that the um, I'll give the maximum amount of strength so it doesn't try to bend in the middle because obviously I've got, I'll have two of these joints there. So what I'm going to do is leave that one full length until I've measured out where the, the second bar is going to go across and then I'll be able to uh, cut that to length until later date. So what I'm going to do is cut this side here to length to there and then cut, obviously cut the top piece off and then um, measure that down to 30, 30 inches and just cut that there and then I'll show you the two pieces put together. Okay, so this is the piece that um, I've just cut. Obviously I've cut that to 30 inches and then taken all the rest off the top. And then that's the, um, that's the end of the, the first one. I've not cut that to length yet, because as I say I want a solid piece of pipe going all the way along. And then that's the first, first one we cut. So as you can see, I've got this one the other way around, obviously, so the two brackets are on top. So this bracket here is going underneath and this bracket's going on the top. So all I need to do now is bring these two together, line them all up like that and then basically just weld into those holes that I drilled earlier and then that will attach that to that, weld drown there and attach it to this so then I'll have a 22, 22 foot length um, which will go all the way from there obviously this is the middle middle section here and then all the way to the end here so that's basically that's basically one side of the uh, the tunnel, 22 foot long so on about um, about 25 inches up, there'll be a second pole going up, um, and then I'm going to um, put um, aluminium um, sheet on top of this as a as a windbreak against the uh, the prevailing winds across the allotments. But that's basically the side constructed. So obviously, what I'll do now is basically repeat this and make another one identical to this. Then I can start to make the ends and the middle sections, the you know the arched parts. So that's basically one side done. Obviously the next thing to do is to um, weld, weld this piece together here as soon as we've got the other pipe um, for the top part. So weld that into there, obviously all are lined up. I obviously need to make this as aligned as I possibly can do, make sure it's not twisted or anything like that. Really good strong weld on the bottom there. Obviously that's the bottom part. And then I'm going to weld together um, two, two or three long lengths of pipe to make the, the second one which will be about here. That's going to be welded in to this pipe here uh, with some more of these brackets in the middle to strengthen it and then uh, that'll run from there all the way to the other end so I'll show you that next. Okay so here is a tunnel that I made um, a few years back and I just wanted to make the point that this is not welded together basically it's all bolted together so if you're not um, if you don't have a welder there's no reason why you can't build uh, one of these frames this one's bolted together, I've just got a piece of metal wrapped around here and it's bolted together there just to strap it onto there and there's a bolt in the end there just to bolt it onto this one. I've got these um, to make like an A-frame type, um, just a strip of metal there just to hold that up, again bolted. <coughs> so if, you, if you're not, um, if you're not um, a person who does a bit of welding what you can do is do is exactly what I've done here um, and all I've done here is just used M M6 bolts through the framework as you can see and um, you know you need to form these these sort of A-frames to keep it all um, straight but this this tunnel is completely bolted together um, exactly the same at this end here um, I've just got a plate wrapped around bolted twice through here and then there's a bolt running through into the um, 
into the sort of the, the arch part if you like and then I've got the arch piece coming over and then these these top pieces here again bolted in and that just supports the top so you know even if you don't have a welder um, as long as you can get lengths of pipe that are long enough um, and if you buy this is actually made from conduit which is the, the steel pipe that you put um, cables through um, you can actually get these threaded so you can actually attach them together um, for example here these are that's a joint there in the pipe and that's basically you, you put a thread on this pipe and a thread on that pipe and then you just basically screw the two pieces of pipe together so you can get the long 22 foot lens if you want to do what I've done and the rest of it down here um, again is bolted together as you can see and uh, that's just um, a bit of a one inch um, angle iron bolted together and then the door is basically made up of um, very lightweight uh, mesh um, and all it is hinged on actually is some um, some cable ties that's all it really needs so all you've got to do you know you're not keeping uh, you're not keeping uh, cattle out of it all you're doing is you're keeping birds and small mammals out of it so you know you can if you if you're not uh, if you're not a person that does welding and, and cutting and stuff like that, as long as you've got a hacksaw and a drill, you can pretty much put one of these together. So that's just an example I made um, about five years ago. This one I made um, about sort of eight years ago, and this is made up of a trampoline and some scaffolding pipe. Now, I, I'm actually going to take this apart to make the new one because I'm going to use these these pieces again and I don't need three tunnels basically so I'm going to be, this one's basically past its um, serviceable date really. So I hope this episode of Jim's Love and Garden has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions that you've got below and I'll always get back to you. If there's anything you're not sure about, please do ask a question and I'll, um, I'll either answer it in the next episode or I will um, um, write you back a comment. And uh, that, was the, that was the first instalment of, of, of How to Build a Tunnel. Obviously the second one will be coming soon. So watch this space and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Love and Garden.